Welcome back. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Sunrunner's Fire by Melanie Ron. This is book three in her Dragon Prince series. If you followed my channel, you know I reviewed book one, Dragon Prince, about a year ago. So that up so you can see it. And uh, book two, The Star Scroll, about six months ago. You know, we always talk about the covers first. These books came out in the late 80s. This one came out in 1990, exactly. These two came out in the late 80s. All three have great cover illustrations done by master illustrator Michael Whalen. If you'll notice, all three have that uh, the same font and a little scroll design on the top, so the books look uniform from the front, and they also match on the back. The spines all match up with the, uh, the way they've designed that. So good job on the cover. As far as the entire trilogy goes, now this cover by Michael Whalen is seriously dope. That is a brilliant orange dragon right there. Just fire red colors with our um, one of our main characters, Andre, right there. One of the Sunrunners with his uh, magic going on. Great set. Now this, first of all, we gotta we gotta give props to Daw Books for putting together just a great trilogy. Looks wise, looks wise, and then even the second trilogy is even. Even just as dope, because, yeah, this has got, there's six books in this whole series. And this is the second trilogy. Again, every single book set up the same way, with the same cover artist and the same same little scrolly works up here. Great job, Daw Books, for keeping it all, keeping it real, keeping it look good. For us book collectors that think that's important, there's not enough publishers out there like y'all doing this. Most publishers inevitably in a series fuck up the spine and illustration at some point down the line. But not you guys. You did you did an ace job here. So <clears throat> I'll let you watch the reviews of book one and two if you'd like. Book three here. Um You know we got just the world building here. Let, let's talk about the world building first. This world that the Melanie Ron has created, I, I liken it to the desert southwest, where you've got desert red rock landscape, but also you've got high rocky mountain crags where things can get, you know, you got the big mountainous peaks where snow and pine trees and, and things can be pretty lush and full of vegetation all the way down into the valleys where it's just mm -hmm. desert. That's the um, landscape that we are working with here. I, I just picture it happening, the whole thing happening in the desert southwest. So the deserts of uh, northern Arizona, southern Utah, Colorado, that kind of thing. The Four Corners area, if you will. Because I, I think Melanie Ron uh, lives in Arizona, so that would make sense that she's placed her, uh, the whole thing kind of like in that landscape. And that's what we're dealing with landscape-wise, but with medieval castles and... You know, knights in armor and dragons and all the things that go along with great fantasy. Uh, this book, a little bit weird. It's a little different than the first two in that it's far more character driven, less action and adventure, more sort of like um, character interaction and soap opera kind of stuff. The um, lineages of these families that we're following through these books, it becomes more convoluted and sort of to the forefront of the story in that who is who is uh who has got problems with who who is dating who who is marrying who and uh you know the drama that that unfolds however don't let that scare you away because it's still a good book there's still dragons i mean we've got the uh <clears throat> We've got Rohan and Sy Sion, as it's, I get this wrong every time it's spelled S-I-O-N-E-D. That's either Sion, Sioned, or Shanad, Shanad, or, or uh, Siobhan. I don't know what that is, but those are the two main characters in these books, and they kind of take a back seat in this book to their children. You know, Andre, Paul, Sionel, 
you know, Ostspell. There's like they got a bunch of different characters to sort of uh, um, um, propel the plot of this book along. And you know, not all, they all don't get along. You know, but Andre is kind of like it's kind of like the. Uh, He's kind of like the dark Jedi. He's kind of like the he's kind of like the Sunrunner because the Sunrunner magic is what they they're dealing with in the Star Scroll, which helps them understand this magic. And uh, it's kind of can be a dark side, light side magic. And uh, Andre is kind of kind of going to the dark side. You know, he's the brother that's kind of going to the dark side. He's the he uh, is the uh, Lord of Goddess Keep, and his brother and and uh, Paul is sort of like they kind of button heads along with his parents uh, and everybody else and so this is the thrust of the plot is just which characters are going to kind of be noble in the end which characters are going to kind of be our protagonists antagonists in the next trilogy that's kind of what we're leading up to here another thing about this book is dragons dragons these char characters <clears throat> unlike any other book that I have, um, any other fantasies I've read, I think Melanie Ron pays so much respect to dragons. And the characters in the book respect the dragons so much, almost to the point of worship. And, and there's a scene that's really kind of hard to read where some of the characters come across a dragon that has been tortured, like some some army or some group of bad people have like strung this dragon up almost as as if they're crucifying the dragon but the dragon's still alive it's very hard to read very touching very i mean but that's kind of the reverence and awe that the characters here treat these dragons well at least the good characters the bad characters clearly tortured the dragon so i mean you know not every character respects the dragon but the the author certainly does and the reader certainly does and most of the good characters certainly do too. The other thing that about this book, now I give these two books high ratings. This one, a little bit lower of a rating it's going to get because the structure of it is just a little odd. You know, these these books uh, took place over, you know, span of time, you know, 10 or 12 years, as does this one. But what happens in this one is... The first nine years of the book are sort of take, it takes place in the first half of the book where each chapter we jump a year ahead, we jump a year ahead for, and then nine years. And then the last half of the book takes place over the span of like a couple weeks. So that was a little jarring and it's not kind of the pace that Melanie Ron set up for us to follow in these two books or these other ones. This book sort of stands alone with its kind of odd pacing. But anyway... I still love the Dragon Prince trilogy as a whole. I think it's one of the greatest um, world-building, George R. 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 Martin-esque political intrigue type fantasies you're going to get out there with a lot of dragons, a lot of action and adventure, a lot of swordplay, a lot of magic, Sunrunner magic. And it's just great. And, 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 and to top it off, the like I said, Dob Books did such a great job of putting together the trilogy in such a nice fashion that you just want this on your shelf. So, let's give this book about an 8 out of 10. A good way to launch ourselves into the second trilogy, because the, this book sort of sets up all the players and all the pieces for this next trilogy, which is dope! Dope, folks. So, Sunrunner's Fire, 8 out of 10. Everything Melanie Ron does is good, and I recommend.